people who have achieved many things in their life, people who have many worldly possessions which money can buy, still aspire for having more money and more conveniences in their life. They may go to any extent and sometimes resort to means which is unfair or unaccepted. Finally, they can be caught and convicted too. Why this? We don't know. I request you have a retrospection whenever you indulge yourself in any endeavors like this. Welcome once again to World News, News Analysis. News Analysis is a weekly magazine on current affairs. To begin with, the main points in a nutshell. Bangkok Blast suspects targeting Israeli diplomats. West Bank crash, eight Palestinian children killed. Former Olympus chairman arrested in accounting prob. Afghanistan's Karzai in Pakistan for talks with Taliban. Honduras prison fire, huge task to identify victims. Syria crisis, China sends senior envoy. And now the news in detail. Bangkok blast suspects targeting Israeli diplomats. A group of Iranians detained after explosions in Thailand capital Bangkok were intending to target two Israeli diplomats, Thai police say. There were no further details of the individual targets, but, but planning was said to be at an advanced stage. Officials have linked Tuesday's Bangkok blast to attacks on Israeli diplomats in Georgia and in India on Monday. Israel has accused Tehran of being behind all three attacks. Tehran has denied any involvement. Two men are in custody in Bangkok over a Tuesday's explosions. A third man was arrested in Malaysia trying to board a flight to Iran. And a fourth suspect is still at large, believed by immigration officials to be back in Iran. Their targets were individuals, Israeli diplomats, not the Thai people, said National Police Chief Priyopan Dampong. There had been widespread speculation of the plot aiming at Israelis, but Preopan is the first Thai official elaborate on the target. He said the suspects are likely to be charged with possession of explosive devices and attempted murder. The suspects were named as Saeed Muradi, 28, who lost both legs after being caught in accident explosions. Mohammed Kazeit, 42, who was paraded before journalists in Bangkok on Thursday. Masood Sadak Shaha, 31, who fled to Malaysia and is now facing extradition back to Thailand. Leila Rouhani, who rented the Bangkok house where the suspects lived. Immigration officials say she has fled to Tehran. The alarm was raised when the explosion ripped the roof of their house in central Bangkok. Mr. Sadakstra and Mr. Kazei managed to flee the house after the explosion, but Mr. Moradi was injured and tried to catch a taxi. When the taxi refused to stop for him, he threw at least one bomb at it, according to police. He was later cornered by the police and attempted to throw a bomb at them too. However, he seriously injured himself with a device and lost both his legs. Four other people were injured in the incident. The Bangkok blast came a day after two attacks targeting Israeli diplomats in India and Georgia. An Israeli diplomat was injured in Delhi attack after a motorcycle rider attached an explosive device to her car. Around the same time, a bomb beneath an Israeli diplomat's car in Tbilisi, Georgia, was found and diffused. Thai police said the device they found were similar to the ones used in Delhi and Georgia. And Israeli officials have repeatedly stated that the Iranian regime was behind all three attacks in league with Lebanon's Islamist militant group Hezbollah. Several suspected members of Hezbollah were arrested last month in Bangkok. 
though police have not publicly linked them to the detained Iranians. Tehran officials have accused Israel of staging the attacks as part of a psychological war aimed at deflecting attention from what they are, say are Israeli killings of nuclear scientists in Iran. West Bank crash, eight Palestinian children killed. At least eight Palestinian children have been killed in a collision between a school bus and an Israeli lorry on road in the West Bank. The bus is believed to have been carrying up to 50 children at the time of the crash, which happened on a busy road junction. At least one report said a teacher had also been killed. In a broadcast, Mr. Abbas described the accident as a horrific national disaster and said all flags would fly at half-mast. The toll so far shows that more than 10 children have died and scores of injured are receiving treatment in various medical centers in the West Bank, he said. The higher figure of the number of dead has not been confirmed. The children were apparently traveling from their school in the West Bank village of Anatha when the two vehicles collided head-on. According to reports, the lorry driver, an Israeli Arab, was injured. Dr. Ahmad Bitawi, director of Ramallah Hospital, said five children and a teacher had been pronounced dead at the hospital, while a further 54 people injured in the crash were treated there, Reuters news agency reported. Some of the survivors were also taken to Jerusalem's Hadassah University Hospital. It's an ugly, unbelievable, terrible accident. It shakes the feeling of the whole world because it includes babies. Adam al hindin uncle of two injured children, told Reuters. Former Olympus chairman arrested in a counting probe. Former Olympus chairman Suyoshi Kikukawa and two other former executives have been arrested as part of the continuing investigations in the camera company. The firm is being prompted for an accounting cover-up after it admitted to hiding dollars 1.7 billion in losses over two decades. Mr. Kikukawa resigned in October after the scandal broke out. Olympus has sued 19 former and current executives over the issue. Former Executive Vice President Hishashi Mori and former Auditor Hideo Yamada are other two people who were arrested. This is the first solid increment taking a system that has governed itself on informal rules to the one that is based on formal rules and law. Kenneth Quick here, the economist told reporters. The scandal broke out in October after former chief executive Michael Woodford claimed he was fired for raising concerns about the company's accounting practices. Mr. Woodford pointed out that he had questioned Olympus payment of $687 million in fees to financial advisors during the acquisition of UK medical equipment company Cyrus. Although the company initially denied the allegations, it later admitted that it had been hiding losses for as long as 20 years. The scandal resulted in the company's shares plunging more than 50% of the Tokyo Stock Exchange TSE. The TSE had also placed the stock under a watch list as the firm delayed filings its latest accounts in the wake of the scandal. Analysts said the latest developments were a victory for the firm's shareholders. It is a game of the Kikukawa and other people who have frauded the company and its shareholders of billions of dollars, Mr. Kukir said. This is a day that anyone who believes in the rule of law should be celebrating. Olympus has been going through a tough time since the scandal broke, not at least because of the way in which it has handled the affair. While it has sued 19 people involved in the cover-up, some of those accused continue to be part of the firm's management. Analysts said this was preventing necessary changes from being made at the firm. The case of Olympus, we have very strange situation, Gerard Faisal of Euro Technology Japan told the reporters. 
There's a management in place that is being sued by its own company and has publicly declared that it's not going to take any big decision, he said. The firm has said that all board members subject to the lawsuit will resign by March or April. It has also called an emergency shareholder meeting to elect a new management. However, analysts said these steps should have been taken much earlier and that the delay has hurt Olympus. Afghanistan's Karzai in Pakistan for talks on Taliban. Afghanistan President Hamid Karzai is in Pakistan for talks expected to focus on attempts to bring the Taliban into the peace process. Mr. Karzai is likely to tackle claims that Pakistani military personnel continue to support the insurgency. Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad is due to join the meeting for later talks focusing on broader issues. Earlier, the Afghan leader told Wall Street Journal that he had already started discussions with Taliban. There have been contacts between the U.S. government and the Taliban. There have been contacts between Afghan government and the Taliban, he said in an interview published on Thursday. And there have been some contacts that we have made, all of us together, including the Taliban. He said Pakistan's cooperation would make the process easier. The U.S., Afghanistan and the Taliban have been involved in a 10 day process to explore the possibility of peace talks which were likely to be hosted by Qatar. The paper reported that Mr. Karzai refused to go into details about the talks. It's unclear whether the comments suggest that the contacts have been gone further previously reported. The Afghan leader arrived in Islamabad earlier and held talks with Prime Minister Yusuf Raza Gilani. Analyst says Mr. Karzai may seek access to Taliban leaders believed to be in Pakistan. The Afghan leader had good relations with Pakistan's civilian politicians, but ties have often been tense with military whom he accuses of backing the Taliban. News reporters in Islamabad says talks on the Taliban are likely to be overshadowed by the arrival of Mr. Ahmadinejad.